Here's an overview of all the equipment I'm going to be using on my next test. I have my 45 amp uh, power supply, two batteries each connected to the inverter through a 4 gauge heavy power cable. I have this kilowatt meter set to watts. This will measure the watt draw of my resistive loads. I did verify that this reads correctly on a modified sign wave input. Uh, it's actually a pretty nice little meter. I'm impressed with it. Measured within 1% of my uh, other test methods, so that'll be accurate. I have my RMS meter plugged in measuring the output voltage of the inverter. I have a DC clamp meter connected to the input so we can see how many amps it's drawing from the batteries. This is fused to 320 amps as we discovered when we opened it up. So I need to make sure that this stays below 320, preferably well below, otherwise I risk blowing those fuses. And I have uh, two electric heaters over here. They're each 1500 watts when they receive 120 volts. If the uh, output voltage of this inverter sags somewhat below 120 volts, they'll draw less than 1500 watts since the output power of a resistive load is proportional to the square of the voltage. So that's why I have this kilowatt on here, because then I don't have to calculate it. It's much easier. So I'll, uh, I'll zoom in here for the actual test so you can read all of these meters. All right, I think you can see all three meters here. Input amps, output voltage and voltage waveform, and watts. So we had noted before that uh, the output voltage of this inverter sagged under a 1500 watt load when I had my load on my heater on high. Uh, and I thought that was because the input power wasn't adequate. So I have much better input power now. Let's turn on the same load and see if the output voltage sags down from its 115 volt level. So I have the heater on the same setting that it was before, and you can see that it is holding at 115 volts. So the uh, voltage jumped around a little bit there as uh, I turned the load off, but uh, yeah, it's doing it again. So th there is one thing that I don't like about this inverter. Whenever you have a load on it and you shut the load off, it kind of wigs out a little bit and uh, the output voltage isn't stable. It actually shuts off for a brief amount of time and then turns back on. It doesn't handle that condition very well, which is probably fine if you're just running power tools, but if you're trying to power a variety of other things in your house for emergency power that could get pretty annoying. Um, so that's one thing that I don't like about it. But uh, you can see that giving it better input power did resolve that problem. So next I'm going to see if I can uh, load this down to, uh, to its 2500 watt level. This kilowatt meter isn't rated for anything over about uh, 1500 watts so it's probably going to be unhappy but it will still read an output voltage. So I'll turn this one to high. And I'll turn this one on low to start with. So we have about uh, 2100 watts there. Output voltage of 104 volts. Turn this one on high, so they're both on high now. And we're still at about 2100 watts. Output at 100 volts. So this inverter was not capable of supplying 2500 watts, even with this uh, beefed up uh, input power configuration. So I think realistically, you're never going to get be able to get 2,500 watts out of this. Uh, 2,000 watts is probably the best you're going to get. And I'm also not able to test the uh, um, the current limit on here, the output uh, current limit, because I can't get to 2,500 watts. That also means that the surge capability is going to be somewhat limited to around 2,000 watts also, since it's continuous output power can't get above that. But uh, we'll do a little bit more testing here. I would like to run this inverter under a heavy load for a long period of time to make sure that it uh, properly cools itself and doesn't destroy itself or anything like that, but I don't have a power source available where that uh, allows me to do that testing, so I am not going to do it. It uh, hasn't gotten warm so far in the testing, uh, it's just barely warm to the touch, so I, it seems like it's okay for any real use circumstance. Um, but uh, instead of testing for that then, I'm going to instead generate an efficiency curve to see if this is really as efficient as they claim it is. So for this test setup I have uh, my DC clamp meter connected up to the input power cables. I have a DC multimeter connected up right across the uh, input terminals right here at the inverter. Uh, there's a significant amount of efficiency loss in the cabling going to the batteries but it's really unfair to include that because that's not the inverter's fault, that's the cabling. So I'm not going to include that. This will be uh, efficiency starting right at the input power cables, uh, right at the input power terminals that is, neglecting any loss in the cabling. 
I have my kilowatt meter connected up here to see what uh, my output wattage load is. And uh, as I mentioned, that is, uh, is actually a pretty accurate meter, even for a modified sine wave. The uh, power strip and the kilowatt probably only take a watt or so between the two of them, so that won't skew my measurements very much. And for loads, I have uh, three different electric heaters over here, plus uh, my light. And uh, I'm just going to use resistive loads for this testing because it greatly simplifies things. There's lots of other variables that get involved when you uh, start up things like motors and such. These do have fans in them, but the fans only take 15 watts or so, so it doesn't really skew things very much. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use this test setup to generate an efficiency curve, and uh, I'll graph that out and get back to you with what it really is. And these are the results of my efficiency tests. It only took me a few minutes to do this, so I just clicked through it in uh, an Excel spreadsheet. But uh, here's the, uh, the efficiency of it. At lower output currents, lower output powers, it's uh, not terribly efficient, 65 to 70 percent, but that's not too bad for a 1500 watt inverter. I, at least I don't think so. And uh, the efficiency peaks somewhere between 500 watts and 1000, and uh, then it slowly trails off. And I'm not able to get any measurements uh, past about 2,000 watts because I can't supply it with enough 12 volt uh, amperage with the cables that I have, cables and power sources that I have. So there's the efficiency curve. It uh, never hits 90, but it's above 85 for most of the useful curve. So I think that's respectable.